Podcast family, hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Design Break Podcast. I'm your host, Rocky Rourke, and today we're diving into an essential topic for every creative professional, understanding the immense value that we bring to our clients. Now, in the world of design and creativity, it's not just about delivering a project. It's about understanding the depth and breadth of your impact, the value that you give to your clients. Now, imagine this. You're in a client meeting. The air is thick with anticipation. Your client looks expectant, ready to be wowed. You unveil your design, not just as a series of visuals, but as a narrative, a solution. You're not just presenting colors and fonts. You're unveiling a strategy, a vision, a way to connect their brand with their clients. In that moment, you're more than a designer. You're a visionary. You're a problem solver and an innovator. That's what we are going to explore today. We are going to explore the multifaceted roles that we embody as creative professionals for our clients. We're not just someone who creates pretty pictures. We are someone who brings immense value to our clients. Now, before we delve into today's episode, I want to give another amazing shout out to Creative South. Blue Cyclops, my design studio, is actually partnering with Creative South. We are going to be handling uh, their marketing and strategy, their social uh, accounts and everything like that. And so you're going to hear us talk about Creative South quite a bit on this podcast because we want to give back to them. We want to bring more and more of you amazing uh, creatives to the conference next year. So please bear with us as we constantly share, you know, about Creative South, about, you know, what's going to be happening in the 2024 conference um, as it unfolds. So for those of you who may not still know who Creative South is, let's give a little bit of a uh, deep dive into what Creative South is and what you can expect if you attend next year, which hopefully you do. Now, Creative South is a creative conference that has been around for well over a decade, and it constantly is bringing so many amazing ideas, skill sets, and people together to one basically big happy family. Now, the 2024 uh, conference is all set to unfold another chapter of creativity and connection. I've been a part of this journey, as I've said before, for well over a decade myself, first attending in 2013 as a senior in college. Uh, And ever since then, I have been to each and every Creative South that has gone on, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon because it is an amazing, fresh wave of creativity, and it always inspires me. So don't miss out. Head to www.creativesouth.com and secure your spot for this unmissable event. Now, as we pivot back to our main discussion for today's episode, let's unwrap the layers of a designer's influence. You know, in our field, each project is a new adventure. It's a unique puzzle to solve. You know, we're not just pushing pixels. We're not playing with colors. We're at the heart of storytelling, of innovation, of strategic growth. Starting with our first point in today's uh, episode, let's delve into the core of our impact in problem solving skills. This is where the true magic of design begins to unfold, revealing how we as designers are pivotal in turning challenges into triumphant solutions. Now, this first, you know, thing that we're going to talk about today, this first superpower, because let's actually call it what it is. It is a superpower of designers, of creative professionals, problem solving. You know, we don't just create, we resolve, we simplify, we innovate. Our designs are answers to unspoken questions, uh, solutions to hidden challenges. This skill is basically a beacon of value in this complex world our clients are navigating. You know, problem solving is something that really sets us apart as creative professionals from people who are just production designers, who are just production artists, those people who every day are creating the same thing over and over again. What we want to do is we want to always improve and become better designers, better creative professionals. And that first starts with problem solving. Problem solving is definitely something that will, uh, impact your career, especially as you're growing in seniority. You know, when you're a junior designer, you might not be doing too much problem solving, but as you get to senior level, as you get to art director, creative director, design director, to full-blown design studio owner, you are going to see problem solving skills becoming more and more important with your everyday work. 
So this is the first and probably one of the most important pieces of this. And we're actually going to be going through and discussing 10 of these total. So bear with me on this episode. Next, number two is our expertise in you and UX in user experience. Now, when people hear this, when people hear user experience, a lot of times their instant thought is product design is UI UX. You know, it's all about, uh, you know, creating product designs, it's creating app designs, uh, websites and things like that. That's actually not what I'm talking about here. I'm actually talking about user experience as creative professionals. The one thing that we do is we look at everything with a different lens, you know, especially if we are people who create things, we look at, you know, how they work, how people interact, how we interact with them. Uh, I still remember, and this is probably the best advice I ever got when I first uh, was starting uh, my journey as a marketing designer, as a uh, uh, website designer um, back in 2014. Somebody was trying to explain to me what user experience was, and he wasn't actually a uh, designer at all. He was the general manager of uh, an agency I was working at, and he basically was showing me like each interaction and explaining to me, you know, what user experience involves. And it was at that moment I had an epiphany that we all, not only designers, but everyone in general has some basic knowledge of good user experience, the things that we want to see and the things we don't want to see when it comes to designs. And so I tell people, you know, when you are, you know, talking to a client, when you're, you know, even just attending a meeting with a product, if you're not in the product design space, that's fine. You will still always have uh, insights and ideas and things uh, that you can question uh, with this. And so this is a hidden piece of value. You know, you don't necessarily have to be the one creating the UX. You don't have to be the one creating the product designs and things like that, but you can add value by just offering your honest opinions and from your own experience as a user, because every single day, we as people are using mobile apps. We're using dashboards. You know, think about, you know, this morning when you checked your bank account, right? You're in a product dashboard. You know, when you're using a mobile app to track your fitness, you're a user. So you all have user experience that you just don't know about or that you don't know how to tap. And so that is definitely an amazing place that you can add value, even in small doses. And it makes large impacts. So moving on to the third one, we're going to talk about brand development. We're going to talk about uh, three pieces of this brand development. We're going to talk about expansion, which is something that most people don't even think about. And then of course, reinforcement, you know, so here we're not just artists, we're brand architects, we're brand strategists. You know, we lay the foundation of a brand's visual identity, nurturing it to become a symbol of trust and recognition within consumers' minds. And so the first part of that brand development, everybody knows this. This is a value point that all branding designers uh, know, a lot of other designers know. But the other two parts here, expansion and reinforcement, are two things that a lot of people don't think about or they may not uh, think relevant or necessary for design, for creativity. So the biggest thing here is expansion. So um, this is something that I didn't even really think about myself until probably 2021. That's when it really uh, hit me. I started a job. I took a break from Blue Cyclops and st uh, started a job as a lead designer for a startup um, based in San Francisco. Uh, it was mostly a SaaS company geared towards market uh, marketers. And when I joined the team, they had just gone through a big rebrand. And so they got all the files from the agency and that was it. There was no additional support. There was no talk of uh, additional help from the agency. They just basically like, all right, here you go. That's it. Bye. Have a great life. And what I then did for the next, I want to say six months was take that brand, expand it, create rules for it, and uh, basically onboard a whole brand new design team in order to use it, you know, creating a design system for the marketing brand. Uh, it was honestly a lot of fun too. That was actually something that was very fun, but it really opened my eyes to all those times where I created branding projects, whether I was working at agencies or I was working independently as a freelancer or with Blue Cyclops. And it made me realize that I was leaving a lot on the table. You know, there are sometimes projects that you don't even think about, which is brand expansion. You know, when you 
go and create a system or you see an agency go and create a design system or, or sorry, a, a brand system, brand identity system for a client, the biggest thing that they miss out on is they miss out on the after, you know, the expanding of it. Because if you look at it, that first design, so it's first, that first visual brand identity that you present and give to a client, that's only the first step. That's only about 10% of what they need moving forward. They need a lot of support. They need a lot of templates. They need a lot of design and so on and so forth. And to the point where brand expansion has uh, been a Im very important part of uh, Blue Cyclops' business. In fact, uh, I kind of lump it into design support, but two of our biggest clients, we are constantly working on brand expansion, on improving it, on making it better from what they currently have. One of those clients, I designed the brand from start to finish. And so now what I'm doing is I'm working on expanding it, pushing the boundaries of it, making sure that everything still fo feels cohesive, making sure that we are constantly doing a lot, uh, a lot of reinforcement work. Um, where we're creating these uh, these types of rules and systems into place. Now, when you finish up a branding project and you give the client a style guide or a brand identity guidelines, now that is loose rules. That is rules that for every single brand basically out there. But there's a lot of other things that people don't think about. There's a lot of things involving color, involving uh, brand elements and things like that that are not really included or they're one page in a book of 40 pages. And so brand expansion, development, reinforcement, all of that plays a very intricate part in this. All right. So now let's move into the next one, number four here, which is innovation and trend forecasting. You know, we as designers are trendsetters. You know, we're the forward thinkers. Our insights into emerging trends help keep our clients ahead of the curve, setting the pace in dynamic marketplaces. Now, this is one of the things that I, I almost wasn't going to include in this because I am not the biggest fan of being a trendsetter or uh, focusing so much on trends, but it is true. We bring a lot of value to clients because a lot of times clients don't understand trends. They don't, don't understand styles and uh, the way that things work. And so in the design community, we stay up to date on trends. We see when they are emerging. We see when they are leaving. We know when and where we should suggest using specific trends. Uh, I think last year we had a project that popped up where a client wanted to use a specific illustration style um, for some illustrations on their new website. And we had to actually have a conversation with them about this because what they wanted to use was a trend that was on the outs. In fact, as of right now, I don't have an example to share with you guys, but I can tell you this right now, the illustration style is no more. Uh, most people are not using the style. And when they do, it seems dated. Um, and so we were able to convince them to use something completely different. And that style in which that they uh, went with, we're under NDA, so I can't share. Um, they actually, you know, now they're, they're looking a lot better. They're forward facing instead of falling backwards with their brand. So it's very important to keep, you know, on the lookout of trends, keep on uh, the lookout of innovation. And also when things are leaving the space, when they're becoming uh, outdated, because we need to be able to educate our clients and speak up too when they uh, are wrong or when they may not understand what uh, they're just talking about. Number five, the emotional connection. This is where our designers transcend aesthetics. We weave stories evoking emotions and build a bond between the brand and its audience. It's a powerful tool in creating brand loyalty. And so this year, this is more for designers who also get involved in strategy, um, who also get involved in brand storytelling. Not all designers out there, and trust me, you know, you yourselves may not uh, may not be involved in this. Not all designers are involved in the storytelling aspect. Usually that's more senior level designers uh, or even design strategy or brand strategists, design strategists, uh, copywriters, they're more involved. Now, it is important to, as you're growing your career, as you're getting uh, more in tune with your creativity, that you also try to learn these skills. Learning about storytelling is very important. The amount of times that I hear on client calls, storytelling being brought up, it's crazy. I, I almost want to say it's like an 80 to 90% 
probability of it popping up in calls, especially qualified calls. So I would definitely would suggest, you know, getting in touch with the emotional aspect of design is very important. And one small way that you can also do this is things like color theory, brand elements. There's a lot of different things out there, um, especially when it comes to illustrations too. Illustrations really help to evoke emotion, but the same with motion graphics, the same with web design. There's so many different ways that you can be in touch with emotions, both with your designs and with uh, your, your client's uh, user base with your clients, customers and everything. All right. Number six, you know, let's not forget about the impact of marketing and advertising. So boosting marketing and advertising efforts, our creative input can make the difference between a good campaign and a great one. We elevate messages, ensuring that they resonate with the audience. Now, no matter what, no matter where you are, no matter what you do, we can all kind of agree that good design is very impactful. And we, as blue, as myself and blue Cyclops, we focus a lot on brand and marketing. That's our, our two main uh, arch types when it comes to the clients that we interact with, with the departments that we interact with when, within our clients and everything. And design is very important. Think back to the, the greats. Think back to like the great ad campaigns and marketing campaigns right off the bat. One of the first ones that pop in to my head is the VW Beetle campaigns, right? Uh, now they just showed the car. They just showed it in specific ways. They focused on the fact that, you know, here it is. This is, uh, the VW Beetle. Um, it doesn't have any bells and whistles. It's a simple car. It's a cheap car. It's a small car. And they really, really push that with the designs for them. Uh, and so when you think about that, when you think about going into a different realm, Apple, with the 1984 campaign where you have that the video of the person running up and throwing a sledgehammer into the screen and everything that is even though it's not graphic design it's not branding design it still is a major aspect of design and marketing you know somebody had to come up with that somebody had to come up with the artboard somebody had to come up with the visual representation the videography uh, and everything those are aspects of good design if we look at today, uh, let's switch gears to uh, more things like breakfast cereal, um, breakfast cereal or coffee or uh, what else? Uh, beer packaging, right? Uh, when you go, let's actually focus on beer packaging. Hopefully, you know, people listening to this are within age of this. Um, but me as a designer, one of my favorite things to do, I don't drink alcohol. Uh, I haven't had a drink of alcohol probably in two, three years uh, or so. Um, but one of my favorite things to do is to go by the uh, alcohol aisle or the beer aisle at my local grocery store and just look at the design, look at the cans. And even though I don't drink alcohol, I'm like, hmm, if I was going to pick up a, a you know, a beer or something or a bottle of wine for uh, some occasion or something like that, I'm going to go with the ones that are, that have better designs, better labels on it. And so, you know, when you look at that, you can see that just by creating more impactful designs, you can increase the possibility of good marketing and advertising. All right, moving on. Let's go to number seven. Uh, and then there's the business value that we add. So increasing business value for our clients through uh, exceptional design, we enhance the perceived value of products and services, empowering businesses to elevate their market position. So I, I look at a good example of this is looking at people like Tad Carpenter, uh, Carpenter Collective um, is his studio. And we look at, he does a lot of uh, product, a lot of product design in that he creates packaging. He creates visual brand identities for, for these uh, brands, their, uh, their different packaging needs and things like that. And we can see that the perceived value of these products change so dramatically uh, once you add good design, because if you were to take one of these uh, clients of his and you were to just have like a college student uh, design the uh, packaging, uh, it's still the same product. It's just different design. The product might be amazing, but the design is not eye catching. It's not bring, it doesn't have the value, the same value as what uh, Tad Carpenter and his team produce, what they create, what they share. And so, you know, what we do with design is the better designs that we produce, the better uh, designs and creative that the client has, 
the more value that their product has. The fact that when you go through and take an ordinary product that's out there in the space and you change design, you do a brand refresh or design refresh, even on just the packaging itself, it can create such immense value for the client. In fact, I've seen where good design can impact uh, business value in the form of the stock market. And I've also seen where it can negatively affect designs as well. So we really help to, or, or one of our biggest forms of value that we give the clients is uh, increased business value, uh, especially when it comes to dollars and cents. All right. Number eight, our role extends to strategic thinking. We align design with business objectives, ensuring every creative decision adds a tangible value and drives towards the end goal. And so this is, again, this kind of goes back to a couple of these other uh, touch points that we've had in this, this uh, episode. You know, we can be strategic thinkers. We don't just have to be production designers. We don't just have to be someone who says yes to every single thing our client says. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I am not a yes person. I have never been a yes person. I know when to, uh, to fight. I know when to say no to clients. Um, I've even had uh, people message me on Slack uh, within organizations when they see that I've said no to a major decision maker. And they're like, what does that feel like being able to say no to that person? Um, now, does that always work? Does, does it always, is it always something that uh, has a positive outcome? No, it doesn't. There are definitely uh, areas where Saying no can be a bad thing, um, depending on who it is that you're talking to. How you say no is very important. And also knowing when to pick battles, too. So certain times, there, you know, it could be saying no to something small and the client just won't relent. The stakeholder won't relent. And so you will have to choose, okay, is this a hill that I want to die on? Or is this a hill that I can just let go and I can, you know, retreat and say yes in this instance? I will still level my suggestions or my um, negative feedback towards, you know, the decision, but I will sometimes relent. Uh, but other times there are specific things and I will actually use that line where I say, you know, to the client, this is a hill that I'm willing to die on. This is how strongly I feel about this. And in those situations, they can see, you know, I tell them before we even start an engagement, I will not say yes to every single uh, thing that you ask. Uh, I'm not a yes person. I am here to be your partner. I'm here to help you. And so being strategic is very important in that, you know, knowing when to do this, knowing uh, when, you know, to speak up and be able to give them, uh, you know, ideas on strategy. Now, one thing I will say is if you are giving strat strategic advice and you're not hired to do that with a client, you do not want to, to just be like, by the way, I think your campaign sucks. I think that you want to do A, B, and C versus X, Y, and Z. Uh, don't do that. That will not be good. Uh, instead, you know, wait until they ask for advice or, you know, as you can go through and just write up like some ideas for them and say, Hey, by the way, I, I remember on the call yesterday, you were sharing some of the information on your strategy for next year. Here's some ideas I came up with just in case you want to check them out. You don't have to, don't worry. I'm not billing you for this. I just wanted to, to perhaps try and uh, give you some extra value. And you'd be surprised at how, how receptive that is, even if they don't use it. The fact that you're giving them free value that you're adding to it, it really helps to strengthen the client relationship. All right. And then number nine, and this one is actually really good. This is uh, something that I think is very important. And I think we actually might only have nine of these, not 10, um, because I think I doubled up uh, on nine and 10 here, but this one is very important. All right. And so now number nine, and in fact, I actually, as I'm looking at my notes right now, uh, this is actually the last one. We don't have 10. It looks like I accidentally put this twice on here. Uh, so I do apologize. So we're only have nine on this list, uh, instead of having a nice round 10, uh, that is the outsider's perspective. You know, as outsiders, we bring fresh eyes, unbiased thoughts. We challenge norms, uh, propose innovative solutions, and often illuminate paths that internal teams might miss. And with this too, this is actually a great, um, a great topic for one of my primary clients. Uh, my former employers that later became clients of mine, 
um, they are in the Bitcoin space and coming, uh, I first started, you know, working with them, uh, last year, I believe in May and I had, you know, just base knowledge of Bitcoin. Um, I had base knowledge of cryptocurrency, you know, I had bought and sold cryptocurrency over the years. Um, but they had this huge knowledge base of Bitcoin and they were questioning whether or not it would be good to bring, you know, an outsider in someone who wasn't familiar with Bitcoin, who wasn't a major advocate of it. And the way that I, you know, kind of argued this, and in fact, uh, I did have a champion at the company who wanted me to work there. Uh, we both argued this, that I would be bringing in a outsider's perspective. I would be able to be like the, uh, the inside outside man, I guess. I, I don't know how to, to put it, but I was able to give them a perspective that wasn't clouded by the main uh, topic of the company. You know, I was able to give them a, a perspective from many different industries versus the one industry that most of the people at the company were working in or had worked in for the last decade. And so it was uh, something that really helped out. And even to this day, you know, I still am able as uh, as a contractor, you know, the contracting Blue Cyclops, I'm still able to give them that outside perspective that they honestly need. And a lot of clients really appreciate that outside perspective because it's almost like a, a check and balances type thing. You know, it allows them to have someone else validate or invalidate ideas that are being proposed. And it's honestly next to the problem solving uh, one that we discussed at the beginning of this episode, outside perspective is probably one of the most important pieces of that. Because once you start working in house at a startup or a company, the biggest thing is, is that you begin to look at everything under the same lens for them. Versus when you come for, come as an outsider in, you're able to still keep the lens of an outsider and you're able to give them a better perspective overall. All right. So in wrapping up today's episode, it's clear the value we bring as designers and creative professionals is immense. It's multifaceted. There's so many different things that we offer to clients. I wanted to make sure to record this episode for all of you so you could see the value. It's not just about the designs that you make. It's about so much more than that. And this is a great episode because it allows you to see the value and write notes and take notes and be like, okay, here are different things that I offer to my client that I may not have even thought of, especially those of you who are younger in your career path who may not have thought about this. So from problem solving to emotional storytelling, from strategic insights to innovative foresight, our contribution is pivotal for our clients. So if today's episode sparked new thoughts or reinforced your understanding of the value as a designer that you share with your clients, consider sharing this episode with your network, with other creatives out there who you think would gain value from it. You know, we thrive on your feedback and engagement with Design Break Podcast. You know, so please be sure to reach out, send us a DM on Twitter, or if you're watching us on YouTube, please share a comment down below with any questions that you might have, any suggestions, episode uh, suggestions, etc. We love to hear from all of you. We actually, as of the recording of this, and probably as you guys are listening to this episode, we actually now have a new website. Uh, up that's live hopefully uh, thedesignbreak.com definitely go check us out uh, you can listen to all of our episodes there uh, we're also going to be sharing some blog content and other things as well so be on the lookout for that and you know I just want to say again thank you all for joining me on this creative journey with this podcast I hope that you all have an amazing new year I'm not sure if this is going to go out before or after the new year but I hope you guys have a great year ahead of you and please always remember to stay passionate stay positive stay creative I hope you guys have a great day that's it for me bye <laughs>